Hi friends, my name is Marissa. I'm happy to be here with you. <clears throat> my shirt says Earth Child. <laughs> I really love this shirt. I felt like sharing. Okay, so this morning I wanna talk about the war on consciousness and what that means. And I understand just like anything else on this beautiful blue and green planet that people are gonna have conflicting ideas of what is going on. However, I feel like even if you stripped away all labels or all interpretations of what's happening on this planet that we could see and come to terms with and agree on some pretty in our face patterns that have perpetuated themselves on the planet for centuries. And I think a good segue into this is to talk about what consciousness is in the first place. So if you've been in the spiritual community, no matter how long you've been in it, eventually you're going to find <laughs> this term or come across this term, consciousness. If you've been in it longer, you probably hear it all the time, right? Consciousness. Expand your consciousness, the state of your consciousness. And, you know, these labels are great for, it's like, sometimes I think, when we get so far along our path, we use terms, very terms that seem very basic to us, but it's like, just like anything else that you would learn in a school, your grade level or how much you've been studying something will affect how loosely and how casually you can throw around certain terms. So I'm just gonna bring it back to the basics for those beings that maybe are drawn to this video that have a very loose understanding of certain concepts in the ascension process and in spirituality in general. So when beings, when teachers, when I use the term consciousness, I'm just referring to the overall state of your mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. And consciousness is affected and determined. Your, these states are creating what's known as, you know, some people call it an auric field, but the state of your consciousness will also determine the way that you not only are living your reality, what you, how you're interpreting your reality, but the state of your consciousness has also been shown over time to be able to directly influence your external reality, right? Because energy, this whole give and take, this energy thing is really real, you guys. And you know, if, if we are just looking at things from a very Newtonian perspective, this very cause and effect-like perspective, we're seeing things in a very hyper-masculine, kind of way whereas consciousness and spirituality and you know this whole dance between like light, light and dark and what it means to be a spiritual being having a human experience there's other components that are necessary to be aware of including consciousness including the fact that as you wake up and as you expand your consciousness as you align your small self your human self with these ideas and with these streams of consciousness that are more in alignment with truth truth and less in alignment with fear and propaganda and you know all of these distractions outside of us that are trying to pull us outside of ourselves and outside of that frame of being in alignment with a higher state of consciousness right and so and that's that's another thing when we talk about levels of consciousness it's not a permission slip to start labeling each other. We're in an age where we're really being guided to step away from labels and a step away from systems of hierarchy. Labels within themselves are not bad, but it's, it's you know, labels and terms are just to get on the same page, right? It's just to communicate a message. It's just for one being to communicate and to offer how they're experiencing reality to another. When it comes to this war on consciousness, it's like this war on really what it comes down to is your attention. Because consciousness at the end of the day, if you think about the one thing that's been consistent throughout your entire life, it's been this silent witness, it's been this observer, this observing entity, this force, that is not you, this force that is not Marissa, but it's there as a witness, witnessing all Marissa's distortions and all of her victories and all of her losses. It's this, this presence, this essence, right? 
and it's like anything else on this earth, right? In order for something to grow, we need to nourish it. We need to put it in sunlight. We need to fertilize it. We need to put our love and affection and attention into something in order for it to grow, whether you're talking about something as casual and basic as like having a garden or whether you're talking about children or whether you're talking about a business, you have to nurture things on this plane of existence in order for them to grow and evolve in a certain way. And so just what we've seen on the planet perpetually over eons is this war on where we're allowing people or where people's attention is being guided towards. And again, this is where we get into tricky waters of like conspiracies or you know what's actually going on behind the scenes. But regardless of conspiracy theories or anything, which by the way is a term created by the CIA in order to kind of gaslight people stepping into their truth fun fact, but we can all see how those were not being coddled by the powers that be into a state of love and into a state of understanding self as other and other as self. We're not really being encouraged to merge with and implement these ideas that would actually bring us more in alignment with higher states of consciousness. And what we see perpetuating on the planet, especially right now, more and more is this, this consciousness that is much, much lower. It's much, it's less dense, it, it's, it's heavier, and it's thicker with confusion, it's riddled with lies, it's really separating, trying to separate the small self as far away as it can from the higher self. And if you think of you know energy as being a being, because it is, just like your thoughts are beings, right? Just like everything that we see in these, this external realm is just a suggestion. And what you're choosing to feed by placing your attention on is what will continue to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And it doesn't take a genius to recognize over time like, that the things that the powers that be, the things that the media would like us to focus on are those things that feed that fear energy. And we see that fear cuts us off from creativity. We see when adrenaline is released, we're so aware of all of the potential threats at once that we cut ourselves off from a state of gratitude. I mean, there's so many studies that have been shown that have been that that really just show over time what being in a perpetual state of fear does and if you were to take it a step back even further the best way to control a population and the best way to push an agenda the best way to control a species or someone else is by keeping them in a state of perpetual fear because when you're in a state of fear you're disconnected from the truth of who you are right truth and feeding the side of love, feeding the side of higher truths and interconnectivity and it's all for fun and it's all truly working out for your best interest and it's all here to help guide you back to you. When we're not feeding that side of the spectrum, we're becoming more and more and more a slave to the fear and a slave to the entities and the beings that gain an upper hand that actually benefit from your fear. And whether, I know there's some people that believe there's actual entities that feed off fear, I definitely feel that. There are certain beings that when you're in a fearful state, you'll just be surrounded by those beings, whether in the physical plane or whether you're in the spiritual realms, that feed off that fear. That's where they get their sustenance from. Versus when you're in a state of love and you're emanating that and you're connected, it's like it doesn't matter what seems to be going on outside on the shared collective screen of reality, like you can be in your own bubble of love and light and therefore you have those beings surrounding you in the astral realms, you'll connect with those beings within the real time, right? Within real life and I want to leave this off with a, a, a study that 
I found myself coming back to over and over again, especially when I was in group fitness. I, I talked about this quite a bit, and that is, I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with Joe Dispenza. He's known as the modern mystic. He's really kind of this powerful bridge between spirituality and science right now, kind of showing that they're not opposite, that they're very complementary. You know, the science is kind of like the masculine that can take some of these very mystical, very out there, very intangible concepts and kind of do its best to put a container around it. So he's an epigeneticist, he's a neuroscientist, and he is a quantum physicist. And he has studied this stuff for decades. And there's this one example he uses about someone who finds themselves in rush hour traffic for two years, let's just throw out a number, two years of their life, right? So over time, seven o'clock rolls around and person A finds themselves in their car, getting pissed off with the world, getting flipping people off, just like hating life, super angry, people cutting them off. So being stuck in this rush hour traffic at 7 a.m. every day, over time, your mind has then programmed your body, right? Your attention, your focus on that shitty stuff has created this this feedback loop in your body to where if you take person A and you put them on a different part of the planet for a month even, right? When 7 a.m. rolls around into whatever time zone person A was from, even if he's sitting on a beach in freaking Costa Rica or Bali or something completely disconnected from his normal state of reality, seven o'clock rolls around in this time zone, his body has been programmed so much by the mechanism, by the computer that is his mind that he will start to release, that body will start to release those chemicals and even if there's nothing real time to indicate that there's anything to be pissed off about, his body will say, it's time to get pissed off. And so his mind will start to search for something to be pissed off about. That's what this war on, the, on consciousness is, the war on your attention the war on where you place your attention, right? Because the longer you place your attention on something, these are how systems work, you guys. Systems are something that over time, they take care of themselves, right? It's something that you don't have to think about. And if, if we were in a, in a state and on a planet where the there wasn't a war on consciousness and we were allowed and encouraged to remember ourselves as sovereign spirit, sovereign beings, creator beings, it wouldn't be such a struggle. It, there wouldn't be such an effort that we see these days when people finally wake up and they try to reprogram their state of consciousness. It's because we've been raised in a culture where our entire lifetimes, right? And granted, this is gonna shorten more and more as more beings incarnate on the planet, as more star seeds wake up, as more light workers wake up to this innate truth of being creator incarnate we're gonna see that timeline be a lot shorter in terms of how much work we have how much unconditioning we have to do right so i feel like that's a good place to kind of leave off you know the war on consciousness is not something to be scared of again because that's adding to fear energy but when we can understand that we are in a cage is only when we can then set ourselves free from it, right? Because there's nothing more sad than a creature that doesn't, you know, this immense, this beautiful being that is supposed to be free, like, a, like take like a cheetah, for example. And we see these beings that are supposed to be free and extremely powerful and elegant and graceful and in tune with nature, in tune with themselves. <laughs> We see, we know what that's supposed to look like and, and how it's supposed to feel. And then we see that same being put in a place of fear or when it's kept in a cage and we feel so sorry for that creature. Humanity is no different. There are beings that feel, I don't want to say sorry for us, but they their hearts go out to us because they see how humanity has been kept in a cage for far too long. And so... The war on consciousness just comes down to the war and the pull for your attention. Because what you feed the most, the wolf inside you that you feed the most is, is the wolf that will become more nourished. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel fear because a lot of you that are drawn to my content, you're empathic, you're very intuitive, you're highly sensitive like myself. It's not about never feeling it, right? Because 
as you expand your consciousness, you learn tools along the way to drop into your center meditation. So it's like all of this surface stuff can be happening, but you understand that you can quiet your mind, you can drop beneath the surface. And so all of that stuff is happening, but it's not pulling you. It's not affecting your behavior, your decisions in life, because you've gone beneath the surface and you know your truth, right? And, and part of your job is to feel all of that and to give it a healthy outlet to be transmuted, right? So if there's one tip on how to take back control of your consciousness, it's just learning how to focus your attention. Because you can be here now, and depending on where you're deciding to focus your consciousness will depend on how your reality is covered. It will color the amount of gratitude you feel, the amount of hope, the amount of inspiration, the amount of creativity you access, and it can also color, depending on where you focus, the opposite. It, will, it can color how fearful you feel, how doomed you feel, how shitty this planet is, how shitty your life is, right? That's the war that's happening. And certain beings feed off of and benefit from you being pulled towards that fear end of the spectrum because you've now forgotten your sovereignty. You've now given up your rights to be the creator of your life. Because fear is not a creator, fear is a destroyer. Come over here, direct your attention to what feels good, what feels right, what let, lets you feel expanded, right? That's what we talk about, higher levels of consciousness, you feel more free, you feel more expanded, you feel closer to truth, right? You feel more like yourself because you're, you're coming back into your center, you're aligning yourself to that, to your own source codes, right? You're removing the filters, the, more, the less filters that you have between your lower self and your higher self, the more freedom you feel, the more expansive you feel. And you'll notice too that the rules start to work differently for you, right? Just like we see so many beings in India, we see, we've heard of what's known as cities. These are the gifts that beings get or that they tap into, I should say, when they clear more and more filters, beings that are able to teleport, um, literally physically send their bodies somewhere else or that can move objects, uh, telepathy, like these are things that are really common in India, right? It's just this Western world that we find ourselves in that it's like super woo-woo and super weird. No, this is, this is it. The rules of the game work differently for you as you expand your consciousness. Money just showing up at a random point in time because the catalysts to wake up to yourself are different right? The cat, these things bumping up in our external reality wouldn't need to happen so much if we were actually utilizing catalysts for what they were. And it's just to lead you back to this understanding of yourself as God, of yourself as the creator. It's to bring you back in alignment. Whether uh, it, it feels good all the time is, is, is not it, right? There's beings that actually will crave those moments of suffering and confusion because they know it's going to bring them closer to God. That's a catalyst to God. Grace is suffering. Suffering is grace. So it's not about never feeling fear, but it's about utilizing it for what it is. Let it bring you back to your center. Dissect it. Let it redirect your focus. And then that's your emotional guidance system. The war in your consciousness wants to separate you from your emotions, from your emotive state, because that's your truth detector. And so if you don't know what the fuck you're feeling or why the fuck you're feeling it, that's a really sure way to get you to make decisions that aren't actually in alignment with you and that are going to keep, your cage is going to continue to get smaller, right? So yeah, direct your awareness, keep expanding, keep going in what's right for you, what's right for you. Drop this idea that there's one right way to do things. There's a right way for you and only you know what that is. That's the, that's the ultimate, I feel like, betrayal is putting your sense of what am I supposed to do into the hands of others because this is, this is just between you and God. You are God. It's just between you and yourself. You only have your higher self to answer to at the end of the day. Everything else is just a suggestion. You can take it or leave it. This was a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, but yeah, I hope it brought you guys something. 
If I left anything out, leave a comment and we'll talk very soon. Star family, give us a thumbs up. Let's circulate the good word. Much love.